This is for with people news. Okay. The point of this video is more along the lines. The states need to get off their butts and take their states back. It's called the Tenth Amendment. Um, I guess a day or two ago, the governor of South Dakota was going to shoot off fireworks at M Mount Rushmore. And because Biden says, no, you cannot do that. She's going, pretty pleased, may I? And trying to get a permit. Mrs. Governor of South Dakota, use your 10th Amendment and take that land back. There is no such things as federal land unless it's for army bases and select few of other uh, federal uh, needs. Okay? So take your 10th Amendment and go and have the fireworks. Alright. So I'm bringing this up because this falls under the 10th Amendment also. Okay? And I'm going to stop probably here in a little bit and talk about this uh, a little bit more. Because this is getting ridiculous. Our state's is is not forcing the government under their 10th Amendment. And they really need to start forcing it now. Uh, Arkansas, I believe, actually um, did a, a constitution uh, bill to actually start using their 10th Amendment. And the governor, well, the Senate is going to cause conflict or whatever. Well, what it's doing is the federal government is going to say, hey, we're not going to give you no money. Oh, wait a minute. You're stealing money from us and you're telling the states you're not going to give them our money for the states we live in. Uh, no. <laughs> How about you not steal any more money and don't give the money to the states in the first darn place? All right. Address. Uh, I think it shows that the county, he, he doesn't care about the border. And, and they, they do not want to resolve the challenges that we have on the border. But I will tell you this, uh, it, the first 100 days of the Biden administration, They've been great for the cartels, for the gangs, for the human traffickers who have been exploiting the border. Because what happens is uh, you have all these young migrants surge the border and the border patrol officers are occupied dealing with those who are surged in. And that is when uh, the cartels and gang members, they're able to use the open spaces uh, to sneak across uh, the more high value people, uh, such as terrorists, uh, such as people with criminal records, uh, and as well as fentanyl, the drugs and things like that. And that's exactly why we have all of these Department of Public Safety officers down here, because we are working to for Texas to deploy resources to secure the border. So what kind of a cost does this represent for the yes. state of Texas? Because we're not talking about the cost very much of this. A good point, because this doesn't come free. So our state legislature, uh, they allocate about $800 million uh, every two years for the state to pay for this. This year, because of the extended time that we will have the National Guard on the border, it likely will clear exceed a billion dollars for the state to have to secure the United States of America. So here's our goal. I, I, we're paying for this, uh, but I want to have Texas secure the border and have the Biden administration pay for it. You know, we're going to talk with A.G. Paxton later on in the show, but he made a point saying Texas is a launch pad, but once they come in through Texas, illegals are going all across the country. Drugs are going into the interior of the country. Tell me about that, because one Border Patrol agent told me that the numbers for fentanyl up 5,000% year over year, uh, heroin up 4,000% in terms of drugs seized. No, you'll have people in the country 
in the, the midwestern part of the, the northern part think, well, that's a border issue. We don't have to worry about it. The border comes to them every single day because as people cross the border, uh, they take uh, the, the gang members uh, will export uh, the drugs to Chicago, to New York, to uh, North or South Carolina, or even up to Washington State or other places like that. And so every state is affected by the people who are coming across the border illegally. And that's exactly why all of us need to join together in this process to make sure that we are securing it so that we are stopping the drug traffickers. And Maria, the human traffickers, human trafficking is one of the most vicious and serious crimes that takes place across the country. And uh, the way that the people come across the border is through human trafficking. And then those human traffickers in the United States, they continue that practice as they exploit people wherever they may uh, send them to across the country. The other thing that really struck me was um, once they're released, after they get processed, once they're released, they get legal status. It shows the, the president's, you know, President Biden's approach to this, uh, and that is to abandon the rule of law. Uh, what they're supposed to, to, to do is to detain them, uh, to cite them, uh, to require that they show up for a court hearing. And they've even abandoned the practice uh, of requiring citations and re uh, requiring appearance uh, at, at courts to show up. And so that does mean that all you have to do is get across the border uh, and you can uh, do anything you want to do. And of course, that means it's an abandonment of the legal immigration laws passed by the United States Congress. Why is the... Okay, I'm going to pause right here. <clears throat> I may not even finish this up. Alright, Greg Abbott, if you ever hear this, you still got the 10th Amendment. If you want the border, fix it. Alright, I understand that federal government has control of foreign affairs. But, under the 10th Amendment, you have authority of protecting your state. So if the federal government is not going to protect you, then you have an obligation under the 10th Amendment to protect the borders. All right. Um, number two. You guys gave up 100 miles inland. All right. So therefore, 100 miles all the way across the southern part of Texas is no longer Texas. It's a territory. Now, we're going to go with, uh, you, some of you guys already know how I feel about the 14th Amendment and changed all the states into territories anyway, that states don't really exist. So votings don't really exist. It's all for show. <clears throat> but if they're going to stand on there and say they're going to call this a state and it's our state and this, that, here, and there, well, by gosh, act like it anyway. All right? Um, again, stand on the Tenth Amendment and this is how serious it is, y'all. From California all the way to the other side of the East Coast to Maine, it's a hundred miles in. So there are certain states that literally does not exist because they're within the hundred miles of the, well, the federal border land. So all these people that live within the guidelines of that 100 mile radius don't belong to the state is technically not allowed to vote because they do not live on the land of whether it's California, whether it's Arizona, whether it's the state of Texas, whether it's Florida, <clears throat> all the way up to Canada you know, you go down south of Canada. It's a hundred miles that the federal government confiscated from the Texas or from uh, the border to say this is all going to be our land. No, it's not. So all you states all the way around here, it's on the border, take your land back. They can do that foreign affair thing 
by the federal constitution at that line. At the fence, if you must have a fence. But at that line, that's where it stops. And maybe three, you know, uh, 30 feet or something like that, you know, to give it some room play or whatever. Maybe good situation, you know, maybe a little bit to travel up down the road or something like that. But this 100 miles, a stretch, you know, uh, like I said just a second ago, if you live within that 100 miles of the border, you do not reside on the land of Texas. You are a territory. You are not part of the state, no longer. That goes for uh, part of Mexico. That goes for Arizona. So you might as well just draw your new line all the way around 100 miles away from there um, and just redesign your state. Because anything within that 100 miles, your territory. You're not allowed to vote. If we're going to play this voting game, we're going to play these territory games and all this kind of stuff. That's just a fact of it. Uh, so, no, Greg Abbott, you take your Tenth Amendment back and tell them stick it where the sun don't shine. I don't care if it's Democrats, Republicans, or Independents. The federal government has no authority whatsoever to confiscate 100 miles inland. Period. From any of the states, I don't care if it's Democrats or Republicans. The federal government is where the line and that's where it stands. Anything past that is territory and is no longer the state. So you can go over there and say, hey, my citizens this, my citizens that. Wrong. They reside in a territory area. They're no, long, no better off than Virgin Islands. The Virgin Islands don't get to vote who the president is or who the Congress is. Why? Because they're territory. You know? Um, so we, we got to really look at some of these things really hard of this federal uh, taking over crap. Alright? Uh, must have a warrant. You know? To enter people's property and all that. Oh, but the Supreme Court says, you know, within the dwellings of the house. No, it says property. It doesn't say X amount of feet from the house. It says property, 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 property. If I got 20 acres of land, I got 20 acres of land and it's my property. You have to have a warrant. So the Supreme Court opinion is null and void. And the states need to protect you on that, farmers. The states need to protect you, ranchers. This is really getting old that our government officials are letting them slide so much. And we are so naive and so ignorant of the Constitution of what powers they actually have and what they don't have. They run over us like a, I don't know, like a big Mack truck. <clears throat> so we the people need to wake up and realize, wait a minute, what is our state's not doing? And what is our state's responsibility of? There's a Tenth Amendment for a reason. And that's for the federal government not to overreach. Let me define this a little bit more for y'all. Federal, 
federal constitution is the law of the land. The state constitution is they can make laws to make us more free and more defined by the federal constitution. But they're not allowed to contradict the constitution of federal. So if it says the Second Amendment is not to be infringed upon, the state of Texas says, uh, can't say the Second Amendment is allowed to be infringed within reason. That's contradictory against the uh, Constitution of Federal Land. You states is one that gave them this power to kind of protect. So you take that back and if you're going to be a sovereign state, by gosh, use it correctly and become a sovereign state. I mean, I'm an idiot, y'all. I'm a complete dumbass. I'm not the smartest tree on the block or brightest tree on the block. See, told you there's proof right there. But if I can figure this crap out, then everybody else can too. Even way back before I actually studied all this, I knew there were certain things wrong. It just felt that I didn't have freedom. It felt my freedom was getting lost. Even though I didn't know none of this, it just something did not set up right. Under all that, it's got your basics, uh, laws, statute, codes, and all that kind of stuff. Well, number one, it doesn't exist. Read your uh, state constitution. States, codes, and all that kind of stuff doesn't exist. Statutes don't exist. All right? And when it does exist, it's for the states, the government officials, period. Not for the people. This is where we get misled into, y'all. All right? Um, I'm probably going to make another video. I don't know if it's going to be tonight or tomorrow. But... We got to realize, y'all, that there is no such thing as a king in our country. There is no King o Biden. There is no King Donald Trump. The Constitution says commerce, foreign affairs. Foreign affairs. Let me repeat this. Foreign affairs. Not commerce because I decided to open a grocery store. President Biden doesn't have no say about that. <clears throat> or Trump. If you must really look, look at the 10th Amendment and find out how the states are cowering down or selling us out, y'all. And I'm going under the uh, impression of selling us out. Well, if you do this, we'll give you some money. How do you think we got, you know, interstate money? Because we gave the federal government the okay and call it federal. But in all actuality, uh, more of anything else, you know, as long as you uh, stay in the state of Texas anyway, you don't even have to buy by federal land or federal laws and 18 wheelers and commercials. Uh, truck drivers, if they stay within the state of Texas, all these federal laws they have doesn't exist. So, I just wanted to kind of 
bring this up to y'all's attention and I may bring up, uh, well, I may show this a little bit more, but I just want to let you guys recognize and understand that, you know, a hundred miles from, uh, west side to the east side of Texas by the, uh, border, a hundred miles are gone. And don't no longer belong to the state of Texas. They literally had to draw a line in there and say, hey, all you people that live in this area can't vote. This is the reason why D.C., okay, uh, D.C., you're not even allowed to vote there, but these uh, Supreme Court, somehow or another, again, their opinion saying they're allowed to when they don't live in the United States of America or the United States, or the United States, however you want to look at this. District of Columbia, anybody who lives in there, don't live in what you got, or we call America. They don't live there. It's, it's basically what you call Indian land, okay? Um, and it's just the same thing as, uh, since I live in Texas, a hundred miles inland all the way from one side to the other, it's just Indian land. You don't get to vote for the president or Congress. So let's just say for Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi? It's not Texas. There is no, uh, Texas, uh, Corpus Christi, Texas. It doesn't exist. Because Texas sold Corpus Christi out to the federal government because that 100 miles inland. It's territory. Mount Rushmore. You know, the past uh, representatives of South Dakota sold out the people of Mount Rushmore. Now, I haven't dug deep. It may be Indian land. So, even if it's Indian land, they get to decide whether it's, uh, fireworks are out there, not the governor and not president. That is, a, again, basically what you call a sovereign uh, individual, country. Uh, you can say country or sovereign territory or whatever you want to call it. But they technically is not part of America. And I'm using these names loosely, y'all, because some of you guys don't really understand the difference between uh, U.S., the United States, the United States, the United States of America, the United States of America. We're under all these names. So out of all these names, which one of them names is the correct term of the land we walk upon and we call freedom? There is no such things as U.S. citizens, your state citizens, and I don't even like citizens. U.S. citizens don't exist. When they come over, they have to announce of which state they're going to reside in. This is Decent for We the People. Bye, y'all.